Hi, um, as Rachel said, I'm a gerontologist, which is the other end of the spectrum, but I do deal with various projects that we run in the Ministry of Health dealing with child abuse. Unfortunately, Zahar Levi Sahar, who was supposed to be presenting today, was not able to be here, so she asked me to fill in for her, so I hope I do her proud. Um, I'll basically be ta talking about how the Ministry of Health deals with child abuse um, in, the various, uh, in the various settings. Um, Israel, for those of you who are not Israeli, Israel has a national health insurance law, which we were talking about earlier. Every resident of the state of Israel is um, allowed to get, is entitled to health insurance, even though I speak English fairly well. My professional language is Hebrew, so please excuse any mistakes that I make. Um, we have four health uh, services that you have to register through, and through them you get the basket of services. Um, they're identical for each person, no matter which health service you, go, you choose to go to, and then you can purchase additional um, health insurance in various ways. But you must register for one of the services. That's just so that you understand a little about how the health system works in Israel. So the health system is, in, is, is made up of hospitals, community clinics, psychiatric settings. Um, we deal with the entire gamut of health services. We don't, they, we don't own the health services, but we are the regulator for these various services. So if we put out various guidelines, all of these different uh, settings must follow our guidelines. So they're also obligated by various laws including a mandatory reporting law of child abuse. And also we have taken those laws and written other guidelines that they must follow. So again, we have the general hospitals, we have rehab hospitals, we have chronic hospitalization, which is mainly for the elderly. Although we do have, we're seeing more and more younger people coming in to these settings, whether it's results of car accidents or very other uh, health issues. The local health clinics, which is what I talked about before. The Ministry of Health is divided up into seven different um, districts, and each district has its own office. People will not come to us in the, in, the off, in the main office, but they will, if they need certain services, will go to the local um, regional office. Um, the family health centers, and that I will say a few words about. In Israel, children up until the age of six go to what we call tipat chalav. They've been called various things over the years, but they do a, um, a follow-up of zero to six. That is where they get, children get immunized. That is where they are then assessed for any developmental issues that they may have. They are then referred, if there are developmental issues, they are referred to other services that exist. And we have the psychiatric system uh, settings, which are both hospitals and community clinics. So like I said, we're responsible for the provision of health services to all Israeli citizens as well as for overseeing the health system. So we both go into hospitals and we do um, checks of hospitals according to various... Um, really bad at this, isn't it? <laughs> no, Kaleem. We have, we have various benchmarks that we check. Um, and... Um, so we oversee that as well as we have um, a number where people can call with various complaints that they may have or various issues that they have not managed to solve and they, they can then call us and get help for that. Um, we plan and supervise and coordinate activities. For example, Uri who spoke to you before was part of, if I'm not mistaken, a course that we ran. Okay, giving you as an example. Um, we run various courses, we do various training, we set up standards and benchmarks by which all these facilities that I mentioned before are supposed to follow and various protocols. We then supervise them. In 2002, 
Um, the WHO declared that violence against women, particularly intimate partner violence and sexual violence, are major public health problems and violations of women's human rights. Now, this was talking about women and domestic violence. The Ministry of Health in Israel has extended that, and it includes all, all forms of domestic abuse, whether it be parents towards children, spouses towards each other. Um, until recently, we followed the paradigm of women being abused by men, by their husbands or by their, by their significant others. We are now changing that paradigm, and we're talking now about domestic violence, where it's a, a dynamic situation. We are, we're not always sure who actually started this abuse and what each person's role in it is. Um, so we're working on that at the moment. But also um, abuse towards the elderly. So this is all a health problem. And Uri spoke about it a little before in saying that not all doctors see it as a health problem, um, which is a difficulty that we face, and I'll mention it a little later. But the ministry as a whole does see that family abuse, domestic violence, is a health problem. We recognize the fact that if it is not taken care of, we will have more doctor's visits, there'll be more hospital visits, there'll be long-term, whether it's from children or women. We know, for example, that in the psychiatric setting, um, in psychiatric hospitals, that a majority of the women who have committed, who have tried to commit suicide, actually suffered from sexual abuse in their childhood. So there are long-term effects to all abuse, which was mentioned before by other people. So why should the health system, I sometimes come to conferences in various parts of the world and everyone kind of looks at me and, and I'm the only one there that was, is from uh, the Ministry of Health. There's the Ministry of Social Welfare and Education and many other things. And I always have to explain that in Israel it's pretty amazing. We're, we're, we're really at the forefront of this, the fact that the Ministry of Health has actually established a department to deal with domestic violence and family abuse. So first of all, it's a non-stigmatic and a universal system. The Ministry of Health sees almost everybody in the state of Israel in some form or the other. Um, it can be either by a local doctor, it can be um, a nurse somewhere, wherever they may come. We're not stigmatic. If you go to the social welfare s service, and I'm sorry to Isabel after that, but um, it's seen as stigmatic. Oh, only poor families go there, lower socioeconomic um, families will go to the social welfare system, Whereas there's nothing stigmatic about going to a doctor because you have a cold. So we're able to see everybody without anyone thinking, oh, you know, they're going to be looking out for us. 98% um, of the women are seen, 98% of the elderly are seen by the health system, which is a very important thing. Often the abused, and this is maybe less so with children because children do go to school, but many other family members who are abused or who are abusing, don't see anybody outside of their family. They really have no one to tell. They have no one to get help from. We talked about this earlier, Isabel and Pamela? Helen, sorry. I don't know where I had Pamela in my head. Um, we talked about the fact that um, not always are people willing to tell and, and um, if you don't see anyone outside of your system, you have no one to tell. So it's very difficult to, for us to discover the abuse. And this way, if you come to a doctor or a nurse or a physiotherapist, for all that matters, they're able to see things that other people are not able to see. Uh, we're also a multidisciplinary team, which is a huge advantage. If I, I worked for 20 years in the social welfare system of Jerusalem. I wasn't able to, I was, we were a bunch of social workers. We're excellent at what we do. But we weren't able to build a puzzle. And once you have a multidisciplinary team of a social worker and a physiotherapist and a doctor and a nurse and a dietitian and whatever it may be, it's much easier to build a picture of possible abuse that the child might be suffering from. There was this uh, program that was, they, they tried to institute a program which at the moment is stuck called uh, the Winter Program, named after the person who led the committee, whereby there would that be that same type of multidisciplinary system between the various ministries, the education ministry and the police and the Ministry of Health. And that way, again, we would be able to build a picture which would make it easier to identify children who are being abused. 
Um, in addition to that, we can ask questions in the medical system, again, as a social worker that I may not be able to ask, things that I may not be able to check. We can take uh, blood tests. A doctor can ask someone to get undressed. And there are ways that we can, again, help build this picture to find a child that may be abused. Um, there are many things that we tell our doctor. That has nothing to do with the reason that we actually came to the doctor. I always give the example of the fact that I have a phobia of flying. And the person who helped me solve that was my GP. I dragged my husband and I went to the GP and I said, I can't get on a plane. Canceled my flight last night because I can't get on a plane. And she was the one that helped me. Doctors hear all the family life stories and we know at least in Israel, I don't know how it works outside of Israel, that you see the same doctor or the same medical practice for many, many years. So they really do know your family history and what's going on. And you know, the husband lost his job and the husband is working again and he's working somewhere where it's really not good for him. And a doctor is able, or a nurse is able to pick up maybe some red flags regarding child, child abuse that weren't even spoken about, but they can again build this picture um, that will help them do this. And I also already spoke about undressing a patient, so we'll go on. So this is a little about um, the development of the domestic violence program in the health system in Israel. First of all, in 1975, there was a directive regarding um, suspected violence. Anyone who comes to a hospital and the, the secretary at the entrance to the ER can recognize signs of violence, not abuse necessarily, must call the police. The secretary, not a doctor and not a nurse, but the person who is accepting the, the, the patient into the hospital, someone comes and they think that they've been in a fight, by law they must call the police. Um, whether a report is then made is a different issue, but at least the police must be called. In 1989, as a result of a case in Tiberias, where a three-year-old girl ended up in hospital in a coma and unfortunately then died, it was discovered later that she had been abused by her uncle. Everybody knew about it. The parents knew about it. The kindergarten teacher knew about it. The neighbors knew about it. Everyone knew about it. And no one did anything about it. And as a result of that, mandatory reporting for children under 18 and those who may, de may be deemed helpless under the law, and there's a certain criteria for that, every citizen of Israel must report abuse. Now for professionals, the difference for professionals is that if as a result of our jobs we hear about a case of abuse, we must report it. And the only difference is, is that as opposed to getting three months in jail, it's possible to get six months in jail. And Isabella and I were talking about this early. And to me, unfortunately, no professional has ever been brought to count for not reporting abuse. The first case that I know of that anyone has even been possibly indicted for it is a case that happened within the last few months of a nursing home where the nurse did not report the abuse. Unfortunately, she was also part of the abuse, and I think that that, that particular issue is going to fall by the wayside, but that, that really is the first case. Um, in 1990, there was a directive uh, put out by the Director General and the Ministry of Health about domestic violence and abuse. In 2000, as a result of a national program, they started doing screening, all screening for women who come to the... Uh, health system, about whether they are suffering from abuse. Um, in 2001, there's, a law was instated whereby any woman coming who is suffering from intimate partner violence must be informed of rights and services that exist for her. Um, 2003, there were six general, um, director general directives put out in the Ministry of Health to all health services regarding all the various forms of abuse. And in 2005, the department that I work in was originated. Now, it originally started with a, um, violence against women. It then has developed in the last 10 years or 15 years to include all various types of abuse and family violence. Oh. Here we go. So the, the Director General... Um, directives that were put out that are relevant to us today 
Or is one is trans the transfer of information between institutes for institutions for locating and identifying minors and helpless persons who are victims of domestic violence. It's a system whereby, in theory, unfortunately at the moment it's not working so well because of commuter, computer glitches. If a child comes to a hospital and there's a suspicion that they have been abused, um, the social worker can go onto the system and check whether they have been in other hospitals and when it's not what, no, I said there are computer problems at the moment. Ah, Zoved? Oh, Yofi, I, I am wrong, I'm sorry. They checked that on you, they used it on Friday. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Where you can go in and that way you can track, since we know, Kibalti, <laughs> Kibalti. Great. Um, as we know, one of the symptoms of uh, child abuse is that they will go to various hospitals. We live in a very small country. So to go from one hospital in Tel Aviv to Rehovot is not such a big deal. It's close enough to be able to go. Tel Aviv itself has three or four different hospitals. So you can kind of go from one to one. So this way you can track whether children have gone and then you and it's a very important bit of information to see um, in order to help establish whether there's child abuse or not. Um, we also have a uh, directive that talks about the appointment of permanent committees on domestic and violence, uh, sexual exploitation and neglect of minors and helpless persons, whereby each hospital, I think I have a something about it later, but it's to raise awareness and it's to um, help train doctors and not only doctors, sorry, all medical staff within the health settings as to what domestic violence is and how to identify it. Um, also, uh, we have screening, all women must be screened in regards to um, domestic violence. They must be asked. There's a questionnaire that was built. One of the places, by the way, I talked about the, um, the tipot chalav, where the children come in, well, usually the mothers bring them in. The mothers have to be asked about whether they suffer from violence. In addition, they're also checked, um, there's done a screening for postpartum depression because we know that there's a link between postpartum depression and child abuse. And even though you're screening the women, by screening the women, you're actually seeing whether there are children who are being abused, which is very important. Um, so the department that I work in, just to give you a, a uh, overview, is Zahra, who is not here today, is the director. Um, we have a national coordinator for IVP, uh, who also deals with child abuse, as well as Zahra dealing with child abuse, and I'm the national coordinator for elder abuse. And in addition, like I said, we have seven districts. In six of those districts, we have a coordinator, a district coordinator for the prevention of family violence. So anyone in the field knows that they exist and they can turn to them if they need help, whether it's advice on how to deal with a case, whether it's we called the police and we're not getting through to them, whether it's we've called the social welfare officer and we can't get them. So, and as well, in addition, they help plan programs and training programs within their district. So what we do on a national level, they do on a regional level. Um, the, the directive that I was talking about, each medical setting must have a committee that deals with domestic abuse, with domestic violence, sorry. The physician is the chairperson, social worker is coordinator, and the nurse is the committee member. So there must be those three people in each committee. You're smiling. We work in a medical system. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's because we work in a medical system without the doctors being part of it. We wouldn't be able to move things forward. That's the way a medical system. Right, right. 100%. The doctors are very, very important, and we find that the committees work best where we have a doctor who's committed and is really willing to help move things along. So in Kaplan, it works amazingly. There are other hospitals who I will not mention who unfortunately the doctors are not as committed. We do have social workers who are committed or nurses who are committed, but when the doctor is not committed, it definitely does not work as well. And then they can ask other professionals either per case or um, per training. Some hospitals have included 
the security person in the hospital because there's, there's various forms of violence. So in each place it works differently, but those are the three um, people that, or the three positions that must be filled. And they have different, um, their, their job is, is manifold actually. First of all, they're a source for consulting, both by members of the medical staff who don't know how to deal with the case or, or think they see something and they're not sure and they can call these members and say, you know, what do we think? There are certain, if you're in a psychiatric uh, hospital or you're in a nursing home, their job is also to tell the heads of the hospital or the nursing home how they think um, things should proceed in a certain case, whether it has to be reported to the police. It doesn't have to be reported to the police, whatever it may be. Um, they help set policy by the hospital as to how staff should be coordinating. They take our guidelines and then write their own um, guidelines for in-house. Um, they help provide proper treatment for victims. They collect data. We do collect data. We realize that the data that we collect is not great because it's not, uh, we're not, it, it's difficult to collect data with people's what well, in America would be a social security number or their ID number here. Um, but we do collect data as to how many people have been identified as possibly suffering from abuse, what type of abuse, who the perpetrator is, whether it's been reported to the police or not, and we do have that data. Um, they're in charge of staff training, whether they do it themselves or they train other people in on staff to help train the rest of the staff raising awareness, um, developing intervention and prevention programs, and cooperation with other services. Uh, one of the health funds used to have a slogan. They said, um, um, babies are our, babies are our, um, how did it go? Something is our baby. Children are our babies, or something about care. But it's not only ours. It's not only ours in the medical system or in the health system, we have to work with everybody else. We have to work with social welfare and we have to work with the police and we have to work with the prosecutors. We all have to work together in order to identify and prevent child abuse because without that, we won't get anywhere. So those are all the goals of the committees. Um, there are, one of the other things that we do in the Ministry of Health is there are child protection centers. I don't know if you're gonna talk about that, Isabel, at all, Melchizedekana. Okay, so I'll just say a word about it. So this is actually a program of the Ministry of Social Welfare and not a program that we run. We just provide um, the funding for the doctor. So it's a place where if any child has suffered any type of abuse, they come and they can get, um, it's a, a comprehensive care. There's a multidisciplinary staff there that can speak to them. Oh. And the head of one of their eight. All right. It's a one-stop shop. It's a one-stop shop for anyone, any child who has suffered uh, abuse. There's a police there. There's um, doctor, child welfare uh, officer, child investigator, um, and they. It, it actually helps that way. The child doesn't have to be taken from place to place. So again, like I said, it's not our program. There are eight centers today. Two, there were two reopened within the last month, if I'm not mistaken, one in Netanya and one in Sfat, I think. Nochan? Okay. Um, so there are eight centers like that nationwide, and it's supposed to promote um, dealing with children who have suffered abuse in order to make it easier for them. Um, we run a lot of training programs. We, we really walk along train the trainer. We are not able to, with the staff of three, um, train the entire medical staff, the medical system, with thousands and thousands of people. So we run training programs that then they go on to train others. Uh, we've had two intensive courses for pediatricians in order for them to help identify child abuse and also learn a little more about forensic medicine, 42 doctors, for me, we're trained. I'm looking. Um, uh, and they then can appear in court and write briefs for the court in regards to child abuse. We run courses for pediatricians in local health clinics. We run courses for nurses, social workers, and we have in Israel also child development institutes. So ch children who have problems with development then go to these institutes, and we have also run training programs for them. Because as we know, there are certain 
um, cases where there is a possibility of more risk of child abuse and definitely children with developmental issues, they're more at risk than uh, other children who are not. Um, and we run ongoing uh, in-house training or help those, for example, Shear and Uri, we will help them if they need us develop programs with them, run programs with them, if they need our advice on anything, we're there. Um, and it's, it's a two-way street. When we are trying to develop something, we will use them in learning from the field what's needed and what programs need to be developed. So most of these courses were held in uh, coordination with an institute called, called the Haruv Institute, which is here in Israel. Um, I already spoke a little about this barriers in healthcare um, as to why we don't identify, even though I said we see everybody in the country and we should be able to identify um, all, what was the 150,000 children who were suffering from sexual abuse, I think the, mention, the number was mentioned this morning, physical abuse, and we don't. Unfortunately, we don't. First of all, not everyone recognizes the fact that abuse is a health problem, despite the fact that the ministry does recognize that and the WHO did state that but not all medical professionals see it as their job. Um, sometimes it's also difficult to recognize early signs of abuse, and we live in a very traditional society where we don't really want to believe that parents will abuse their children or that children abuse their elderly parents, and we just we don't like seeing it. So sometimes it's very difficult for that and for other health reasons. Sometimes it's just difficult to recognize early signs of abuse. And it, there are certain things that, well, is it culture or is it abuse? When you, the, uh, the Persians have this thing where they bite, um, they bite the hands of their children. Well, is that abuse or is it cultural? And sometimes it's very difficult to decide how we're going to deal with it. Um, there's also a lack of awareness, despite the fact for the last 15 years we have been running constant training sessions not all health professionals recognize um, or have the knowledge of abuse, unfortunately. Again, the denial and unwillingness, we don't want to recognize the signs of abuse. Um, also, Uri did talk about this, about the doctors say we reported and the child keeps coming back to us, so why should we keep reporting? And unfortunately, we don't always recognize the fact that there are service, other services available and it's beyond just reporting to the police. And we also speak in different languages. We all speak in Hebrew, and yet the medical system and the social welfare system and the police speak in different language and different terminology, and it doesn't always mean the same thing. And the fact that I see something and I go, oh, that's definitely abuse, doesn't mean that we reach the point where the police can then say to the prosecutors, yeah, this is, go to court with this one. And that's, that can make it very difficult for health professionals when they don't see a difference. Um, and also the trust between a patient and their family. As I said, sometimes you see the same doctor for many years, and how is that doctor then going to feel if he has to report that the parent is abusing the child? Are they going to come back with their other children? Are we going to keep seeing them? Maybe I'll lose them as a patient, and the next person won't be able to recognize it. So they walk a fine line, and it's not also uh, always so simple. And the other issue is court appearances. Unfortunately, most places do not give that as work time, and then the doctor has to appear in court, and maybe he has to testify against another doctor, or whatever it may be. And, it, and it's not always uh, so simple and easy for a doctor to do that. Um, I'll just, a word about um, future programs that we would like to run. We're developing internet training for all health providers, which is, will be an hour online with a test at the end, an exam at the end which will bring everyone to a baseline. It won't give everyone in-depth knowledge, but we'll, it'll give everyone a baseline, which will make the committees that I spoke to make their work easier when they want to develop programs, because everyone will have some basic knowledge of various forms of abuse. Um, we are also trying, and I think Isabel spoke about, asked a question about this, we're trying to get the various health schools, whether it's nursing school or medical school to start bringing in more programs about domestic violence so that we're training the new doctors that come up. They will already have the knowledge and will already accept the fact that it is a health problem and it's not, oh, this is not my problem. And again, I, I do want to say about doctors, doctors are very busy. I have no doubt that they're very busy. 
And I want them to recognize the red flags. I want them to be able to recognize that the fact that there may be something, and then they can call the social worker. That's okay, I don't mind if they call the social worker, but at least let them have the knowledge and the recognition of what abuse is in order for them to then call in a professional who has more in-depth training. Um, we would like to integrate DV into licensing exams, we're working on that. And we're also at the moment trying to um, develop a job description for those specializing in child abuse in the hospital so that they get the proper remuneration. Because at the moment, doctors who have to work overtime hours or who have to appear in court are not getting paid for that time. And we want them to be able to get paid for the time that they're putting in because then they will also feel more obligated to fulfill their position. Thank you for listening. Um, and that's it.